In our last video, we discussed behavioral interventions for reducing prejudice. Now let's discuss cognitive ones. Cognitive interventions, that is interventions that involve a change in thinking or a thought exercise of some kind, are often considered to be preferable because they require less social engineering and planning than interventions based on cooperative intergroup contact. These interventions are unique in that they can be implemented at both the societal level and at the individual level as part of general self-improvement efforts. So again, in some ways they're preferable, at least from a practical standpoint. One cognitive strategy to reduce one's prejudice is called stereotype inhibition, deliberately monitoring and suppressing the expression of one's automatic prejudices. Interestingly, research suggests that the tendency to employ this strategy is driven at least in part by the need for self-esteem, and more generally, the need to feel good. For example, studies that do the following subsequently lower participants' prejudice. First of all, studies that present positive images rapidly on a screen before a task lower prejudice, and also studies that affirm participants via, uh, via a positive evaluation on a task also lower prejudice. So there's definitely a relationship between stereotype inhibition and self-esteem, since participants who, again, were experimentally manipulated to feel better about themselves in some way, even subtly, were subsequently more likely to engage in this cognitive technique. In addition to being motivated by a need for self-esteem, engaging in stereotype inhibition is also driven by a need for social approval. For example, stereotyping is reduced when people are motivated to project a non-prejudiced image, so when they're trying to be less prejudiced, we also see less stereotyping. And also, stereotype decreases Stereotyping decreases when people are made aware of non-prejudiced norms, meaning they're aware that the people around them or the environment or something about the context means it would be unacceptable to appear prejudiced. Stereotype inhibition was also tested in a study of gender stereotypes about driving. Perhaps counterintuitively, you might not expect this, negating participants' pre-existing stereotypes uh, about women by saying, for example, women are not bad drivers and presenting that message actually increased stereotyping. So we saw less stereotype inhibition in that case. In contrast, a different strategy affirming a counter stereotypical belief about women, for example, by presenting actual examples of female race car drivers, successfully decreased stereotyping. So we saw more stereotype inhibition, which is ultimately the goal. Why is stereotype inhibition effective, and why is this strategy of affirming a counter-stereotypical belief the approach that actually works? Well, primarily because it involves and requires System 2 thinking. Whereas System 1 thinking refers to our automatic thoughts, which are informed by our pre-existing biases, System 2 thinking refers to effortful thinking that examines and questions our automatic thoughts. Deliberately thinking about members of an outgroup in counter-stereotypical terms, for example, a nurturing man, an intelligent poor person, or an obese athlete, interferes with the automatic processing that leads to stereotyping and prejudice. It interferes with our automatic biases and assumptions. Simply telling someone that a stereotype isn't true, however, doesn't prompt System 2 thinking, and so it's less effective at challenging a person's pre-existing stereotypes. A final cognitive intervention we'll discuss is the strategy of stereotype substitution. So we have stereotype inhibition and stereotype substitution. Stereotype substitution involves replacing negative beliefs about a social group with more positive ones. In 2001, Nilanjana, Disgupta, and Anthony Greenwald investigated whether exposure to pictures of admired and disliked exemplars, examples of a group, can reduce the automatic preference for white over black Americans and younger over older people, and in doing so, they demonstrated the power of stere uh, stereotype substitution. So in the study, participants were exposed to pictures of black or white people who were either widely liked or widely disliked. Participants in the liked black condition, as I'll call it, expressed less automatic racial prejudice than those in the other conditions, suggesting that they had replaced their negative beliefs about black Americans with more positive associations. They had engaged in stereotype substitution by being exposed to these positive examples of black Americans who were well liked. And this effect was long-lasting. Testing a, uh, Tested a day later, which is a lot for an experimental manipulation, participants who were in this condition, the liked black condition, were still less racist than the other participants. So again, we had a little bit of a lasting effect. 
And finally, an abundance of evidence suggests that students in prejudice or psychology of diversity type courses tend to express significantly less automatic stereotyping, for example, on an implicit association test, or IAT, by the end of the course, which I am particularly happy about.